Now let's take up the next question dear students. Diameter of the objective of a telescope is 200 cm. What is the resolving power of the telescope? Given wavelength of light is 5000 angstrom. Options A 3.28 into 10 power 5, B 3.28 into 10 power 6, C 6.56 into 10 power 6 and D 1 into 10 power 6. This is a simple problem based on just the formula or the expression for the resolving power of a telescope. Write down the data first. The diameter of the objective is directly given to be 200 centimeter or simply 2 meter. Then the wavelength of the incident light is 500 nanometer or 5000 angstrom or it is 5 into 10 power minus 7 meter. So now we are supposed to find out the resolving power of the telescope. Let's just take the help of the expression for resolving power of the telescope. We know that its limit of resolution is 1.22 lambda by d. Therefore resolving power is just the reciprocal of the limit of resolution. So this has to be d divided by 1.22 lambda. So the d is the diameter of the objective. It is given to be 2 in meter divided by 1.22 into wavelength is 5 into 10 power minus 7. So just simplification will give you the correct answer. So in numerator I have 2 and in denominator it is 5 into 1.22 is uh, slightly greater than 6. I will approximately write this as 6 and I will take that 10 power minus 7 to the numerator that becomes 10 power plus 7. So this is 1 by 3 into 10 power 7 and uh, in remember in denominator I have slightly greater than 3. So 1 by 3 is 0 0.33 but in denominator you have slightly greater than 3 therefore this fraction should be slightly less than 0 0.33. When I have a look at the options I'll come to a conclusion that it should be 0 0.328 somewhere around 0 0.328 into 10 power 7. So this can be written as uh, 3.27 which are there in both the options A and B 3.28 only thing you need to find out is the 10 power so it has to be 10 power 6 so this is the resolving power and it is just the reciprocal of limit of resolution and have a look at the value it is 3.28 into 10 power 6 which is correctly given in option B therefore option B is the correct answer that is 3.28 into 10 power 6 now let's take some of the questions from polarization. Here we go. Which of the following cannot be polarized? Options A. Ultraviolet rays B. Ultrasonic waves C. X-rays and D. Radio waves The students, we know that only transverse waves will undergo polarization and polarization is the only phenomena which decides the nature of the wave or which distinguishes between longitudinal and transverse waves because longitudinal waves do not undergo polarization. Have a look at ultraviolet rays, x-rays and radio waves. These are the different components of your electromagnetic spectrum and all the three are your electromagnetic radiation which are transverse in nature. Therefore, these three Ultraviolet, X-rays and radio waves should undergo polarization. And what about ultrasonic waves? Sonic means sound. Therefore, ultrasonic waves are the sound waves having frequency greater than the audible frequency. Therefore, ultrasonic waves are not transverse waves. They are longitudinal waves. Therefore, ultrasonic waves cannot be polarized. So, that is the correct answer. Therefore, option B ultrasonic waves is the correct answer. Let's go to the next question. When unpolarized light beam is incident from air onto glass of refractive index 1.5 at the polarizing angle, then options A. Reflected beam is polarized 100%. B. Reflected and refracted beam are partially polarized. C. The reason for one is that almost all light is reflected and D all of the above. The students we know from Brewster's law that 
when a ray of light is incident from one medium to another medium at Brewster's angle or at polarizing angle, then we know that the reflected ray is completely plane polarized or in other words, it is polarized to the 100%. So your option A is a correct statement. Then have a look at the remaining statements. Reflected and refracted beams are partially polarized. It should be a wrong statement because the reflected beam is 100% polarized whereas the refracted beam is partially polarized. Therefore your B is a wrong statement. Look at C. The reason for one is that almost all the light is reflected. It's also not a correct statement because only a small portion of light undergoes reflection whereas most of the portion of incident light gets refracted and all of the above which is option D must be the wrong statement. Therefore option A reflected beam is polarized 100% must be the correct answer and we should also know that when the angle of incidence is equal to polarizing angle then the angle between reflected and refracted rays should be 90 degree or in other words reflected and refracted rays are perpendicular to each other and also you should make use of Brewster's law which states that the refractive index of the medium n is equal to tangent of the polarizing angle or angle of Brewster or angle of polarization. So n is equal to tan ip or tan theta p. So here option a is the correct answer. Now have a look at the next question dear students. When the angle of incidence on a material is 60 degree, the reflected light is completely polarized. The velocity of the refracted ray inside the material is options a 3 into 10 power 8 b 3 by root 2 into 10 power 8 c root 3 into 10 power 8 and d 0 0.5 into 10 power 8 and all are in meter per second. The students a statement given here is when the angle of incidence on a material is 60 degree, the reflected light is completely polarized. We know that this happens only for polarizing angle. That is when you incident a beam of light at polarizing angle, then the reflected light is completely polarized. Here the angle of incidence is 60 degree, i.e. 60 degree and at 60 degree the reflected light is completely plane polarized which means that this angle of incidence must be the polarizing angle. So let me call this as IP. So IP is given to be 60 degree. So using Brewster's law when you know the polarizing angle you can always find out the refractive index of the medium. You can find out N using Brewster's law but what is actually be found out is the speed of light, the speed of the refracted ray inside the medium, inside the denser medium. So when you know refractive index of the medium, you can find out the speed of light inside that medium. Now let's make use of Brewster's law first. So Brewster's law states that n is equal to tan ip, tangent of polarizing angle gives you the refractive index. So, n is equal to tan 60 which is equal to root 3. So, the refractive index of the medium is root 3. Using this, I will find out the speed of light using the formula refractive index n is equal to c by v. So, v which is the speed of light inside that denser medium is given by c divided by n c is 3 into 10 power 8 which is the speed of light in vacuum divided by refractive index is root 3 therefore v is equal to 3 by root 3 is nothing but root 3 into 10 power 8 in meter per second so this is the answer given in option c therefore option c is the correct answer let's go to the next question critical angle for certain medium is sine inverse of 0 0.6 the polarizing angle of that medium is options a sine inverse of 0 0.8 b tan inverse of 1.5 c tan inverse of 0 0.6667 and d tan inverse of 1.667. 
dear students here we'll have to connect a relation between the critical angle and polarizing angle for a denser medium so what is given here is the critical angle for a medium which i'll write as ic critical angle is sine inverse of 0 0.6 and we are supposed to find out the polarizing angle IP and we know that the polarizing angle can be calculated by knowing the refractive index of the medium. So we'll have to find out the refractive index of the medium first and later we can find out the polarizing angle. However, refractive index is connected to critical angle as well. Refractive index and critical angle are related by the expression n is equal to 1 by sine ic now ic is sine inverse of 0 0.6 so this clearly says that sine ic is equal to 0 0.6 so refractive index of the medium is 1 over sine ic is 1 over 0 0.6 0 0.6 is 6 divided by 10 so that becomes n is equal to 10 divided by 6 whose value is 1.666 so on which I'll write it as 1.667. So this is the refractive index of the medium. Now I'll go to the polarizing angle which is defined in Brewster's law which says that the refractive index of the medium is equal to tangent of polarizing angle or polarizing angle is equal to tan inverse of your refractive index therefore ip is equal to tan inverse of 1.667 you have a look at the options there is option d which is the correct answer let's go to the next question dear students the phase difference between electric and magnetic field vectors in an electromagnetic wave is options a zero b pi c pi by 2 and d pi by 4. Dear students we know that an electromagnetic wave consists of electric and magnetic field vectors which vary sinusoidally and we know that these two variations take place in mutually perpendicular planes or in other words these electric field vectors are always perpendicular to the magnetic field vectors. This is the reason why most of the students tend to feel that the angle between the electric and magnetic field vectors or the phase difference between the electric and magnetic field vectors is pi by 2 but that's not the correct answer. However, they are perpendicular to each other but the question asked here is the phase difference between electric and magnetic field vectors. These electric and magnetic field vectors oscillate in such a way that they are always in phase or in other words the phase difference between these electric and magnetic field vectors is always zero at a point. Therefore, they are always in phase or in other words, the phase difference between them is zero. Therefore, option A is the correct answer. Let's take up the next question. A ray of light is incident at polarizing angle such that its deviation is 24 degree. Then the angle of incidence is options a 24 degree b 57 degree c 66 degree and d 90 degree here it's given that the ray is traveling from one medium to another medium and the angle of incidence i.e is nothing but the polarizing angle so let me call this as ip i is equal to ip and what else is given the deviation suffered by the ray that is delta is given to be 24 degree what are we supposed to find out is the angle of incidence that is i or ip the value of i is to be found out now how does the deviation help you to find the angle of incidence we have an expression for angle of deviation which is always the difference between angle of incidence and angle of refraction so delta is given by i minus r or r minus i when the ray travels from rarer to denser it should be i minus r so here i is ip and ip minus r is given to be 24 degree and apart from this there is one more idea known 
that is the angle of incidence is polarizing angle when the angle is polarizing angle then there is a connection between the angle of incidence and angle of refraction that is the sum should always be 90 degree this we have already proved in the theory part that is ip plus r should be equal to 90 degree that is theta p plus r or you can call it as ip plus r should be 90 degree now you got two equations one says that ip plus r is equal to 90 degree and the other says that ip minus r is equal to 24 degree now when i add these two equations your r gets cancelled i am left with 2 ip is equal to 114 degree or ip is equal to 57 degree so that is the angle of incidence therefore your option b is the correct answer now you can go one step ahead if you want that is so you can also find out the refractive index of the medium that can be calculated using Brewster's law that is n is equal to tan ip and tan ip is tan 57 and tan 57 is very close to 1.5 however this is not asked in this problem axis of polarizer and analyzer are inclined at an angle of 60 degree intensity of emerging light from analyzer is i intensity of light on the polarizer is options a 8i b 4i c 2i and d i so let's write down the system of two polaroids one is called as the polarizer and the other one analyzer now unpolarized light is incident on the polarizer whose intensity is to be found out let me call it as some i naught let the initial intensity of light be i naught and the intensity of the emergent light is given to be i and we are supposed to find out i naught here and the angle between polarizer and analyzer is given to be 60 degree we'll have to make use of malus law here so malus law states that the emergent light intensity i is equal to the intensity of light falling on the analyzer so we need to know that if i naught is the intensity of incident light on polarizer then on passing through this polarizer look at this they are inclined at an angle 60 degree now after passing through this polarizer the intensity of the emergent light should be i naught by 2 irrespective of the orientation of polarizer so this is always i naught by 2 but remember this light is plane polarized its intensity exactly becomes half of the initial intensity now that gets again reduced and its orientation also gets changed now malus law states that i is equal to the incident intensity is i naught by 2 into cos square theta all right this is equal to i naught by 2 into cos square 60 degree so i naught by 2 into cos 60 is 1 by 2 so this is 1 by 2 square this is equal to i naught divided by 2 into 1 by 4 or i is equal to i naught divided by 8 so we are supposed to find out i naught it has to be 8 i so or in other words the initial incident intensity should be eight times the emergent intensity so this is correctly expressed in option a therefore option a is correct answer